There's a rule in real estate, just like in life, that it's not what you say, but it's how you say it. This is often best demonstrated in real estate with the photographs of the properties. You could have a multi-million dollar house that is absolutely gorgeous, but if you take crappy pictures in order to sell or rent the property, you're probably giving up tens of thousands of dollars. On the flip side, you could have a luxurious $100,000 house like the one behind me, and you could take really great pictures and have it booked up on Airbnb and making incredible cash flow all year round. So what's the secret to taking really exceptional pictures and showing your property in the best light, no matter what price range it's in? I asked my professional photographer friend, Sue Mathias from Nextdoor Photos South Shore to join me in this video and share her top tips for how to make your next investment property look like a million bucks. So whether you're buying properties to rehab and flip or you're buying properties to rent, the marketing component, the pictures, are one of the most important things to sell that property to either a buyer or a renter. So after I'm done rehabbing and staging a property, I always have Sue or her husband Ryan come out and take a whole bunch of really high quality professional pictures. This is our latest investment property that I talk about in this video. So if you wanna hear the details and the numbers and how we bought this property, you can go to the link in the description and check out that video. But this one was almost turnkey and we just recently got done putting in all the furniture and all the final touches to get it ready for Airbnb. So I asked Sue to come out and kind of shadow her while she did her thing and while she took all the pictures here and asked her some of the key questions that you might be curious about how to get really high quality photos. I'm Sue Matais with uh, Nextdoor Photos South Shore, uh, real estate photography and videography. First thing I do is, um, yeah, make sure all the lights are on. I also like to make sure that like window coverings are open. Um, the way we shoot, you want the best natural light. And um, our editors do a really great job of doing a clear window um, pull, um, which just really makes your pictures just sparkle, I think. Well, I shoot in a way that I use both ambient and flash. Um, so, honestly, I need both of them. Okay. Um, sometimes I actually prefer to shoot on a cloudier day than a sunny day. Um, it's probably my own personal preference, but then you are getting um, kind of the shadows and the sunbursts and things, and I can just pull like more natural colors out. So my flash is able to pull, um, get a good window pull. My ambient is able to really bring out the true colors of the bedspread and the wall and the, the wood. And then I let our editors do the... So they basically take it and layer on bolt? Yeah. Okay. Now that I've given you my secrets. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So times of day, probably like best time is when the sun is overhead. Um, unless if you want to, um, it can be really cool to get some, especially for exteriors, um, to get like some great sunset photos. Um, I think that can be really cool. When they're trying to capture a space or their do it themselves. Um, well, I think um, from what I've seen is I really, as a professional, pay attention to lines. And I think a lot of rooms can tend to be warped. If your lines aren't right, your house can look sinking. 
Um, so I think that that's really um, important. Yeah. So when you, you say line, so like making sure that the room just like looks like a square room. Exactly. Like making sure that your walls um, to avoid kind of, well, for me, like I don't like getting the fisheye, uh, making sure your walls are like up and down, like vertical lines are um, super important, I think. Yeah, yeah, I've seen some uh, photos where it's like a tiny little studio and it looks like this thousand square foot room. Exactly. And I just don't think it's really a great presentation or, you know, representation of the space nor um, of the cellar. Yeah. Yeah, our guests would uh, not be happy if they showed up in those kids. Yeah. <laughs>Um, yeah, that's a great question. I um, like to really highlight the best parts of the home. So I personally don't necessarily feel like I need to get every single corner. Um, I like to highlight the best angles of the room because I feel like that's what people need to see. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna retake it. If I can have you step that way just a little bit. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, I like to, and I like to get as much clutter out of the photo as possible so that as you're scrolling through pictures, you're just seeing, your eyes are just kind of drawn in. So I think it's um, super important to use a tripod no matter how you're shooting, um, but it's going to keep your picture from getting blurry. Um, and also to shoot the whole house at a very similar level. The tripod allows you to do that. Um, so I definitely recommend a tripod. I typically shoot, you know, just above waist high on me. Um, you know, about four and a half feet is typically where I go and then a little bit lower, like in the, um, for bathroom shots. Depends on how large the home is. Um, I know the real estate world a bit better than the Airbnb world. So um, again, it's a matter of preference, but I think you wanna just highlight, highlight the best parts of the home. And if you can do that with fewer shots, then I think that's okay. So about 20 shots probably um, is enough for people. I think too many can be overwhelming and you lose them. So, so, 20 awesome shots? 20 awesome shots, <laughs> rather than 50 um, with subpar shots in. So, yeah, when shooting an Airbnb, then it's important to let your guests know what kind of experience they're gonna have, what's available to them, and so being able to provide a picture that shows um, what is available I think is very important by opening cabinets and drawers and um, just trying to get a good shot of that. There you have it, some of the top tips to get the best photos on your next investment property. I think the results speak for themselves. And if you'd like to work with Sue or Ryan, I'll put a link to Nextdoor Photo South Shore in the description below, and you can reach out to them directly. Also hit that like button and subscribe so that you can be notified when other videos like this one on helpful rental investing topics are released. I release videos on this channel on a weekly basis. And finally, you can head on over to Facebook and join the Living Off Rentals Facebook group. It's a super engaged group. It's growing every single day. We get new members in that group and I'd love to see you there, but if not, I'll see you in the next video.